This is a heating power vinyasa flow for your ovulatory phase. This is a time of arousal in the mind and body where we have activating energy, a surge of estrogen and testosterone hormones that allows us to enter into a bit of strength, a bit of our more masculine qualities of solar outpouring energy. So in today's practice, we will be kind of moving into that heating element, the um, pulsation and the strength work that can be present and available to us through a yoga practice. This is part of our series where we're taking a single focus or a single sequence, a yoga practice, and modifying it for the different phases of the cycle. So in today's flow, you will learn how to maybe um, level up your practice to add some different components of strength and power to really support that arousal energy in the ovulatory phase. If you're needing a bit more um, access to energy release so that you can really leverage the radiant energy that you have moving outward in this time in the cycle. Today's practice is a challenging one, and so I invite you to really just be playful, keep an open mind and an open heart, especially if you are somewhat new to the practice, even if you are a seasoned practitioner. There are some challenging postures in this sequence that give you um, a chance to move your edge, to kind of push up against the limits of what you uh, might have explored in the past, and, and really challenge yourself to step into that challenge through this practice. All you'll need is a mat for today's practice, but if you do have a block or a blanket, anything that brings you more comfort, greater ease throughout the practice, feel free to grab those props as well. It can also be helpful if you are practicing near a wall um, to have a little bit of balance support. We're doing a ton of work in single leg balance postures, sort of as an extension of the follicular phase practice where we kind of explored both sides of the body. We're doing that today, but with added power and added heat. So grab your props, grab a towel and some water. This will heat you up and let's get started with today's movement practice. We are ready to begin our heating vinyasa flow practice for the ovulatory phase. So all you will need for this practice is a mat. It's nice to have a block handy if you like to use one of those for your practice. You can also use a wall for some of the standing balance if you are needing a bit of extra support. So we'll begin at the top of the mat. Start to settle in, let your feet be about hips width distance apart. Lift up tall through the spine, soften the shoulders back and down. Enjoy a few rounds of breath here, just really connecting mind and body. So allow your mind to scan the body from head to toe. Just enjoying a few moments of transition before we begin to move. Today's practice will be a bit accelerated, a bit heating. So enjoy these, these few still moments here in the beginning. And then as you're ready, we'll begin to connect movement with breath. Inhale, stretch the arms overhead, lift up tall through the spine. As you exhale, fold over your legs, generous bend in the knees. Relax the head and neck. Inhale, halfway lift the spine, stretch from the sitting bones to the crown. And as you exhale, step the feet back into plank, shoulders over the wrists, hips nice and low, knitting low ribs to hip points. As you inhale, shift your weight forward. As slowly as you can, lower all the way down onto the earth. Untuck the toes, heavy the lower body. Keep the hip points pressing down. Start to roll the shoulders up as you inhale, cobra. Really stretch back, activate the legs. And exhale, release back down to the earth. Tuck the toes. As you inhale, plank knees up or down. And exhale, downward facing dog. Just a breath here. As you inhale, gaze forward, bend your knees. And then slowly step the feet to the hands. Inhale, lift halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Reach your arms overhead as you lift up. Exhale, hands melt down through heart center. Twice more like that. Sun salutation A. Inhale, reach up. Keep a generous bend in the knees as you fold. Relax the head and neck at the bottom. Inhale, lift halfway. 
As you exhale, step your feet back into plank. Find your strong plank first, inhale here. As you exhale, shift your weight forward, bend your elbow straight back to lower to the earth. Untuck the toes, heavy the lower body, inhale, cobra. If you'd like to press into upward dog, you start to lift the hips and thighs off the mat, straighten the arms, broaden the shoulders. So an upward dog, only tops of the feet and hands touch. Exhale, downward facing dog. On an inhale, gaze forward, bend your knees, lift your heels. And with the exhale, step your feet to your hands. Inhale, halfway lift your spine. And exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, rise, stretch the arms tall. And as you exhale, release the hands to heart. Last round, sun A, start to feel that heat building. Inhale. And exhale, fold. Matching breath to movement. Inhale, halfway lift the spine. Exhale, step back into plank. Pause here for the inhale breath. As you exhale, shift forward. You can even pause at the bottom with the, the body hovering. And as you inhale, maybe cobra or upward, upward dog. Really broaden the shoulders apart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Enjoy one full round of breath here. Pedal out the feet, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, gaze forward, lift your heels, bend your knees. And on the exhale, step your feet to your hands. Inhale, lift halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, reach the arms overhead. And as you exhale, hands melt down through heart center. Relax your arms by your sides. Begin to step the feet a bit wider apart. Turn the toes slightly out, heels slightly in. So the ovulatory phase, we're building heat here. We'll alternate between a deep squat and rising to stand. So it looks like this. Take an inhale breath, reach up. And as you exhale, squat. We'll do 10 like this. Inhale, exhale. It's nice and quick. <sighs> inhale, reach. Exhale, squat. Inhale, extend, expand. Exhale, sink low. <sighs> Five more here. Inhale and exhale. Keep the spine upright. Connect with your breath. Your breath can quicken a bit here. Last two. And one. Rise up to stand. Reach your arms overhead. And then nice and slowly settle into your squat. Pause for a breath. You might bring your hands to your heart. Connect with that elevated heart rate here. And then release your hands to the mat. Begin to heel toe your feet together as you come into a forward bend. So you can keep a generous bend in the knees here. And with your next inhale, chair pose. Sink the hips back and down. Reach the arms high. Nice long spine here, big breath. And on your exhale, bring belly to thigh. Sweep your arms behind you, half chair. We'll be here for a few breaths. Inhaling chair and exhaling, sink low, bend the knees. Inhale, reach up and exhale. Inhale, last one like this. Exhale. Now we'll add leg lifts. So as you inhale, right knee hugs to chest. Exhale, half chair. This is one of my favorite sort of mini flows, alternating sides here, just to create heat and strengthen the legs. The next time your right knee is lifted, pause here. Enjoy the strength that comes in that standing leg. So really finding balance on one leg here, collecting your breath. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, warrior three, sweep the arms back behind you, right leg stretches back. Nice and slowly lower the right toes to the earth, hands touch down, find your deepest lunge. So you have four key actions here, the right left shin, excuse me, moving forward, right heel stretching back. You have the left hip descending and the right thigh lifting up. So you have this circuit of energy in the lower body. From here, inhale, stretch your heart forward. And as you exhale, tap your right knee to your left calf. So we'll be here for a few rounds of breath, just adding opportunities for heat, for power in the ovulatory phase in this flow practice. Take five more here, five, four, using your breath, 
two and one. Stretch that right foot back. Turn the heel down so the outer edge of your right foot parallel to the short edge of the mat. We have warrior two in the legs. Front heel bisects the back foot. Begin to walk your hands over to the right. So nice low warrior two here. Wrap the left sitting bone underneath your body. Imagine downward dog in the upper body. Wrapping inner upper arm bones up towards your ears. And then soften the shoulders away from the ears. Big breath in. Slow breath out. As you walk your hands towards center, begin to turn the toes toward the long edge of your mat. And just a few rounds here, alternating between this nice, deep, low lateral lunge. If you can, unsupported, so the hands float from side to side. If you need that extra pillar of support, you can bring fingertips to the earth. Just exploring the space of the inner thighs here. And then coming through center, now turn your heels in, toes out. Reach the arms up in a nice goddess squat. Hands interlace behind your head, elbows nice and wide. Try not to flare the low ribs. Draw low ribs to hip points. And then from here, as you exhale, lean to one side, stretch that arm low. Come back and exhale. Inhale through center. Exhale, reach. So creating some awareness, some activation in the side body. You should feel that activation here. You can even bring a hand to the side waist for that feedback. Last one each side. Come through center. Reach the arms on an inhale. And as you exhale, fold. We'll start to turn now over the right foot. Back foot stays down, knife edge parallel to the short edge of your mat. Coming into that low warrior two stance once again, wrapping right sit bone underneath you, stretching the arms now towards the left corner of your mat. And bend the right knee a bit deeper, create separation between the thigh bones. Last big breath in, and slow breath out. Release some heat. Come back through center, come onto the ball of the back foot, find your deepest lunge. So again, those four movements of lunge, forward, back, down, and up. Keep the heart floating. And then we'll begin with our taps. So left knee now to the right calf, big inhale breath. And as you exhale, tap. So feel the strength, the heat in your right leg now. We'll be here for five more. Using the breath. Three, four, and five. Come back into the lunge. So a slightly different sequence on this side. You'll start to feel it differently in that supporting leg. From here, finding warrior three, slowly. Lift that back leg up, the arms reach. Find your stability first. And then slowly bring the left knee into chest for standing crane. We'll find our transition here once again. Coming through half chair on the exhale. Here we go. Exhale, half chair. Right back into the right leg. So we lift the right leg high. Big breath in. Slow breath out. From here, tree pose. Bring your right foot. So I'll show you this from a different angle here. Right foot to the inner left thigh, can be above or below the knee, just avoiding the knee joint itself. Hug the right foot into the left thigh, left thigh into the right foot. The result is an action up towards the center, so you feel that sort of dropping in to your balance, to your center point here. You can take any shape with the arms, maybe they stay at your heart, maybe you grow your branches nice and tall. Last breath in tree here, big inhale. And then slowly come back through crane. Right knee hugs into chest. We're going to flow here between standing crane and warrior three. So in your exhale, stretch the right leg and arms back. And the inhale, catch your balance. Knee comes to chest. Exhale, reach back. Inhale, knee to chest. 
Last one here, exhale, reach back. And slowly lower the hands to the mat, lower the right toes to the earth. So we're adding a bit on here now. Press your hands into the mat, send your left leg up high. Nice and tall, reach back. Let that hip open, but square the shoulders to the mat here. As you inhale, re-extend the left leg. And on the exhale, core plank, hug left knee to chest. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, core plank. <coughs> Last one like this, inhale. And exhale, core plank, press into the hands to create space. Step your left foot through between your hands, find your lunge. Back heel turns down, preparing the legs for warrior two. Slowly rise in warrior two. Square the shoulders. Telescope the ribs out of the hips as you melt the pelvic floor down. Arms are reaching out to T, gaze over your left fingertips. And then as you inhale, send your right arm down and forward, left arm up and back. So it's reverse warrior, but without the support. So the belly is having to work here to support this shape in space. Big breath in, slow breath out. And then we'll switch. So the left arm circles down and back, right arm up and over, coming into extended side angle here. And then if you like a bit more challenge, take your left arm overhead to meet the right. Stretch from the outer edge of right foot to your fingertips. Lengthen the left hip crease away from the left armpit. Come up through center, warrior two. And as you inhale, star pose. So I'll turn to face you for this part of the sequence. We're in star pose here. As you exhale, fold over your legs. Shift the weight into the ball mounds of your feet so you're high up on the toes here. Let your wrists be directly under your shoulders. So we're adding a bit of heat, a bit of power movement here. As you inhale, lift the heels high, bend the knees just a touch, and on the exhale, find some hang time, hop your feet together into a ball pose squat. So we're alternating between those two movements, between star, land with bent knees, and this nice low squat. So as quick or as slow feels right for you, the goal here, see if you can shift weight onto the hands so that you have hang time where you're supporting your body, your hand balancing here. A few more rounds like this, feeling some heat in the legs, in the shoulders. Last three. Two. And one. Hop the feet out. Rest for a moment in this wide-legged forward bend, but keep the torso nice and even. So head, heart, and hips in alignment, especially if your heart is elevated. And I'll turn back so that I'm matching you as we journey around the mat in this mandala. Start to bend into the knees, slowly rise. And then warrior two now, the right toes turn out towards the short edge of your mat. Create that separation across the pelvic floor. Arms reach out to T. As much space as you can between the inner right knee and inner left shoulder. Really dial the right knee open so if you gaze at your foot, you can see your big toe. Big breath in. Slow breath out. We'll take that unsupported flow here without the arms. So the left arm sweeps down and forward, right arm sweeps up and back, reverse warrior, with a slightly different hand position here to engage and activate the belly. And then we'll alternate, so inhale to prepare, and then we'll sweep the right arm down and back, left arm up and over. Find this position here, and then if you like the added challenge, sweep the right arm overhead. Stretch from left foot through fingertips. Lengthen the right hip crease away from the armpit. Slowly come up in warrior two. Enjoy a breath. 
and let your hands come to frame your right foot. Press into the hands, send your right leg up and back. Let that right hip open, hugging heel to sitting bones, squaring the shoulders, finding a bit of rotation in the low spine. And as you inhale, reach that right leg up and back, core plank, exhale, round, knee to chest. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, empty the breath, coil through the belly, chin to your knee even. Inhale, reach up and back. Last one, exhale, round the spine, the upper back. Step your right foot through between your hands. And we'll slowly come through warrior three now, shifting weight into your right foot. Left leg and arms reach back. And then we'll alternate. So we're here, warrior three, for the exhale. And then as you inhale, knee to chest, standing crane. Exhale, reach back. Heart stays buoyant, floating. Inhale, standing crane. Notice maybe one side is a bit different in terms of balance than the other. Last one here, warrior three. And as you inhale, come through standing crane. We'll shift into tree pose now. Left foot to the inner right thigh. And just notice how this standing ba balance posture feels differently after the work on the right side. So on the left side, we did tree pose first with fresh legs, and now we are recruiting that strength and stability after having worked that side. I'm just acknowledging that place here, pressing foot into thigh, thigh into foot, maybe growing your branches. We'll have a chance to balance it out as we initiate our second mandala around the mat with the left side. Slowly come through center, half chair, exhale. And as you inhale, reach all the way up, rise to stand, exhale, let your hands melt down through your heart. We'll pause for another round of our malasana squat. So again, we're squatting down on the exhale, reaching up on the inhale, taking up as much space as you can. I'll face you here so that we can connect. Toes are slightly out, heels slightly in. Let's begin, inhale and exhale squat. Inhale, reach. We're just here for 10 rounds. Reconnect with your breath, press through the heels. Find any, any rhythm with the arms that feels natural, that allows you to keep the spine nice and tall. We've got four more. Three, two, and one. Settle into your deep squat here. Connect hands to heart. So I love adding these little bursts of explosive movement to this flow practice, just to create that entry point to a bit of heat, a bit of power. From here, release your hands to the mat, heel toe your feet together. So we're at a forward bend at the top of your mat. I'll shift here to join you. And then as you inhale, find chair pose. Sink the hips nice and low first. Keep the heels grounded and then reach the arms up. Big breath in. And as you exhale, half chair. Inhale, reach. And exhale, sink belly to thighs. Reach the arms back. Last one like this. Inhale and exhale. Alternating leg lifts. We reach the left leg and back. Right leg and back. Enjoy a few rounds like that. Just getting playful as you shift weight into one leg at a time. One more round each side. And then this one we are initiating with the left side. So the left knee hugs into chest. Standing crane. From here, cross your left ankle over your right knee. Sink back and down just for a breath. And we'll come up through crane, inhale. Warrior three, exhale. We'll be in that flow for a few rounds. Inhale, standing crane. Exhale, standing pigeon. Ankle over the knee, sit low. Inhale, crane. Exhale, warrior three. So really firing that standing leg here. Inhale, and exhale, sit low. 
We'll do one more like this and then we'll enjoy a bit of a pause in standing pigeon. Come through crane, inhale. And as you exhale, sit back and low. So if you can, melt the hip creases back in space. Let them become heavy. Spread your right toes. So avoid the tendency to curl the foot under. Instead, really radiate in all directions with that foot. You might bring hand to ankle and knee to lift the torso up. And then we'll come back through warrior three. Reach the knee into chest. Inhale. And as you exhale, warrior three. Hands touch down very slowly. Lower the toes, back toes to the earth. Find warrior two. Reach up, inhale. And exhale. <clears throat> as you inhale, straighten your right leg. For triangle pose, I like to heel toe the back foot in a bit just to create a little bit less strain in the sacroiliac joint, so that point that connects the sacrum to the pelvis. Reach your arms out nice and wide. Square the shoulders. And then gaze over your right fingertips. Begin to extend that right arm as far as it will go. Right hand finds the right shin, maybe the ankle, the floor, or a block. And then reach your left arm high. Gaze down at the earth first to free the neck. And then rotate the gaze wherever it feels good. So it might be straight out in front of you, maybe towards your left thumb. Wrap the right sitting bone underneath you. Extend the left hip back in space so that you're lengthening both sides of the waist evenly. A bit of challenge here. Keep that micro bend in the right knee. Begin to offer your right arm forward. And then maybe the left arm joins. Can you extend evenly through both sides of the waist here? Powerful. And then slowly deep bend into that right knee. Come back through warrior two. And we'll inhale to star pose. I'll turn to face you once again for this part of our sequence. So we're in star pose here. You can turn the toes slightly out, heel slightly in. And then as you inhale, squat deeply. Excuse me, as you exhale, squat deeply. Exhale here. And then we inhale to stand. So we're going to step out and together. Step out and together. So you can stay here, stepping the goddess squat out from side to side. If you want to add a bit of power, you can hop the feet together rather than step. So it looks like this. Out, together. Out, together. Keep that gentle bend in the knees at the top. Stay on the balls of the feet so that we're not creating too much impact in the knee joint here. Let's take 10 more. 10, nine, eight, you got this. Breathe, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Pause at the top in star pose. Let your hands come to your heart. Feel that feedback from your breath, from your heart. Use these few moments to let it come down. It's a great heat generator, just like the solar-powered human that we are. Just let that energy radiate out and settle your body. So I'll turn once again so that I'm connecting with you as we circulate around the mat. And now we'll turn left toes out, coming into warrior two. So find that stable starting point. And as you inhale, begin to straighten the left leg, heel to the right foot in as far as you need to kind of level the hips. So they're starting from a really stable place. Let the arms stretch out, soften the shoulder blades. And as you inhale, reach the left fingertips over your left foot. Find length in both sides of the waist. Let the left hand come down. Right arm reaches high. Gaze down at the mat first. Free the back of the neck. And then circle the chin toward your chest, around and up, wherever your gaze needs to be for balance here. So again, 
Left sitting bone wraps underneath you. Left hip crease draws back in space. Right hip stretches towards the back of your mat. Lengthen, lengthen both sides of the waist evenly. And then start to reach your left arm forward. You have the option to take the right arm overhead. So this is extended triangle pose. Uttita Trikonasana, if you are curious of the Sanskrit. And then slowly return the hands, bend into the left knee, rise up in warrior two. As you exhale, the hands come down to frame the left foot. And then we'll slowly come through warrior three here. Reaching the arms back, right leg back. Find that balance. And then as you inhale, standing crane, right knee to chest. And then cross right ankle over left knee, sit low in standing pigeon. This should feel really nice in the outer hip. We'll come through our standing posture and then warrior three once again. So this is our mini flow here, cultivating strength in that standing leg, rhythm and balance in the body. Reaching back, warrior three. <laughs> Find your balance, spread the left toes in all directions. Last one here. And then sink low and standing pigeon, pause for a few breaths. You might let your hands press onto ankle and knee as you lift through the heart. And then come up through center, standing crane. We'll transition through half chair, reach back, sink low, and then the left leg rises once again. We're in standing crane here. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale now, cross left ankle over right knee. Sink back and down. So we're revisiting this shape once again on this side. This time, bring your hands to the mat. So this might be where you stay. This can be extremely challenging. A lot of sensation in the outer hip. If you'd like to become a little playful and explore the arm balance, we'll move in that direction now. So notice there's, there's all these exit ramps that you can take. You can stay in the work at each step of the way. So the next, the next place of work is to shift weight forward into the hands. Begin to rest your shin on the back of, backs of the arms. So wrapping left toes around the right upper arm and the left knee to the left upper arm. Start to stretch your heart forward. Gaze out in front of you. And the next step is to hug the heel, the right heel into your sitting bone. Balance here. Coil through the belly, create strength. Come out, shake it out. We'll have one more entry point here. Adding as we go. This is our ovulatory phase to try something new. Shift your weight forward, coil through the belly. Hug right knee into sitting bone and then maybe explore extending that right leg out. <laughs> so this is still a work in practice for me. You find that hover point, come back in. You might try it a few rounds. And then we'll enter back into our flow. You might stretch the hip a bit more here. <sighs> With your next in-breath, reaching the left knee into chest. Warrior three, stretch back. So here you can keep your arms reaching behind you, or if you need a bit of support, you can take your hands to the earth. We'll be here for, again, another mini flow to create power and heat. Inhale breath. And as you exhale, tap your left toes to the mat. I like to have hands to hips for this one. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, tap the toes. So it's just a light hover with the left toes on the mat. Inhale, reach up. You should feel that now strength in the right leg. Let's do three more. Exhale and inhale. Exhale. Inhale, feel the heat and lower down this time. Rest your left toes on the mat. Hands come down if they aren't already. Press into the hands and your right leg up and back. As you exhale, take your right knee to your right elbow. This time, tiny push up, lower down and back up. 
reach the right leg back. Exhale, coil in, push up and back. Last one here, lower down, exhale and back up. Pause for a breath. And as you exhale, step the right foot through between the hands. Prepare for warrior two. Back heel turns down, rise up. Notice if you've created more space, if you can go a bit deeper in this warrior two shape. Sort of our last exploration as we circulate through. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, reach the right fingertips far out in front of you. See if you can marry the right side waist to the thigh. Left hand to left hip. Begin to shift weight from the left foot to the right. Drag those toes behind you. Come into half moon. Stack the hips, stack the shoulders. Make sure that you can see your toes in your peripheral vision so that the leg is not too far back. Then start to reach your left arm out to T, palm facing down. Big breath in here. Scoop back so that you can see. And then as you exhale, hug left knee to left elbow. Inhale, reach. Exhale, tap. So we'll be here just a few more breaths. You might start to feel the fire again in that standing leg. Last one, reach out and tap, and then extend. Take up space, last few breaths in half moon. And then as slowly as you can, lower the left toes to the earth. Come into warrior two. Feels good to get some, some relief for that right leg. Now coming to the center of your mat, turn your toes in, heels out. Arms reach, inhale. As you exhale, fold. Shift the weight into the ball mounds of your feet, just like we did before. Begin to shift weight into your hands, bend your knees, lift your heels. Hop the feet together, find your ball pose squat. So we're using the long edge of the mat today to explore crow pose. This is a new posture to you. Just be gentle with yourself, find that playful attitude. So we're keeping the inner edges of the feet squeezing together, create that energy to the midline. Let your knees come open. Take your hands out in front of you, spread your fingers wide, and make sure you have some room to travel forward. So we're really rooting down through all 10 finger pads. As you squeeze the inner edges of the feet together, begin to coil the hip points and the heels toward each other, rounding into the upper back so you have the strong back of the heart. Bring your knees to your upper arm bones, maybe even the armpits. And then just like we did in standing pigeon, begin to shift the weight from toes to hands. This might be where you stay, just playing with the balance of weight between feet and hands. The next stage, I'll show from the side so that you can see. The next stage is to hug one heel to your sitting bone. Create that coiling action in the belly, the rounding in the back of the heart. Come back to the other side. Feel that energy, that engagement as you hug the low belly in. And then we shift forward. Maybe begin to hug both heels to the sitting bones finding that balance point in crow. And it can be, you can keep your feet on the mat the whole time. There's lots of work to do there. If you're in crow, you might start to play with straightening the arms a bit and then slowly release down. <sighs> Let your heels rest on your hips, sway your hips side to side here. <sighs> and then slowly coming back through ball pose, Shift weight into your hands to hop your feet apart, finding a wide-legged forward bend here, and then slowly rising up with bent knees, star pose. As you exhale, turn the left toes out, find warrior two on the left side, our last opportunity for this shape. Big breath in, slow breath out. Begin to reach your left fingertips as far as you can. Take the outer left ribs to the inner left thigh. Then begin to reach the right hand to right hip. Drag your right toes in. Transfer weight from right foot to left. 
Coming into half moon B here, Ardha Chandra B. Let the right arm reach up. And again, steady your gaze on a non-moving point. Find balance through the eyes. Option here to reach the right arm out to T, palm faces down, big in breath. As you exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hug knee to elbow. You can keep that micro bend in the left knee so that we're not locking the joint and putting too much weight there. Sometimes we can let the muscles check out by dumping into the joints. Last one like this, inhale and exhale. Re-extend, -ext expand in all directions, take up space. And then slowly lower the right toes to the mat. Right hand comes down, come onto the ball of your back foot. As you inhale, send your left leg up and back. On the exhale, left knee to left elbow, tiny push up or all the way, your choice. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, lower into a push up, any amount. As best as you can, letting the body lower as a unit all together. So we're not dipping the shoulders or the hips. Pause and one legged downward dog. Enjoy your breath. And as you exhale, step the left foot through. We're closing out our second circle around the mat here. Shift weight into the left foot. Find warrior three. From here now, we'll add a bit of heat and power for that standing leg. Bring your hands to your hips. Deep inhale. Elongate the right leg. As you exhale, bend into the left knee. Slowly tap the toes to the earth. Inhale, re-extend. Reach out in both directions. And exhale, bend into the left knee. Lower down, tap the toes. Inhale, lift up. You should feel that fire in the left leg. Exhale, lower down. Reach the toes as far back as they'll go. Three more times. Inhale here. And exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. Keep extending the torso, exhale, lower down. Last one, inhale and exhale. As you inhale, come back through warrior three, stretch the crown and the right toes in opposite directions. Hips are square. And as you inhale, right knee to chest, cross right ankle over left knee, come into standing pigeon. You might stay here. You might start to reach the hands toward the mat. So creating more space if you need it. So the key here is to wrap the right toes around the left upper arm. Make sure you have room to travel so you have room to move forward, bringing right knee to the back of right arm. And here, same thing like we did in crow. We're just shifting from the left toes to the hands, just exploring that sensation first. Keep your gaze out in front of you, your heart stretching forward. Maybe start to hug the left heel toward your sitting bone. Try not to let the hips hike up too far. Really coil through the belly, round in the upper back, and come back. Our final entry point here, if you want to extend the leg, Coming forward, shifting weight into the hands. <sighs> Hugging heel into sitting bone first and from that stable place, radiating out. <sighs> Come back through center. <laughs> Readjust if you need to your position on the mat. And then slowly rise. <sighs> right knee to chest. Exit through half chair. Bring belly to thighs. And then as you inhale, reach all the way up and let the hands melt down through the heart. As we prepare to come down the arc of our practice, just give yourself a few moments, a few breaths here to collect your awareness. When you're ready, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. And on the exhale, step back into downward dog. We'll enjoy downward dog here for several breaths. Pedal out the feet, sway the hips. Let your head move from side to side. And then with your next inhale, come down into tabletop. Soften the belly, gaze up, cow pose. 
come back to neutral. Sway the hip side to side. And then begin to shift onto your left shin. Bring that left shin closer to the center of your mat. Extend the right leg behind you. And then tuck the right knee behind the left. Bring both knees to the mat. And then take your feet out wide. So we're preparing for cow face pose, just a slightly different entry point. Squeeze the inner thighs together, hug the knees. And then slowly walking the hands back. If you need to, you can bring a block or a blanket underneath you. You can also let the knees kind of come up if this is too much strain in that joint. So finding cow face pose, this is really to counter all of the action that we've had throughout this practice of external rotation, of engaging the outer glutes. Now we're creating a bit of length in the outer glutes as we activate and strengthen the inner thighs. So rest here for a few breaths. If you need deeper sensation, you can walk the hands out a bit forward. Press the hands energetically away to sink the hip creases. Let them anchor back and down. You can keep just the hips here. If you'd like to pair it with a bit of a shoulder stretch heart opener, reach your right arm high. Turn the palm to face behind you and bring the palm to your upper back, to the back of the heart. Let your left arm turn out to T. Let the thumb turn down. And then wrap the back of your hand to your back. Crawl the fingertips toward each other. Maybe they connect, maybe they don't. Compress your head into your top arm. Hug your left elbow into the center. So just sort of mirroring the shape in the legs with the upper body here. Knit the front ribs and the hip points together and then re-extend the heart up. As you're ready, release. Take your hands out in front of you, coming back to that crisscross table. And just re-center the legs, come back through tabletop, sway the hips side to side. Keep your hips over your knees here. Walk your hands out far in front of you for puppy pose. So soften the heart to the earth, maybe forehead or chin to the mat. Press the shins down and energetically back as you move the hands down and energetically forward. Shine your sitting bones up, lengthen the spine. And we'll slowly walk the hands back in. This time bringing your right shin to the center of the mat, extending the left leg back. And then begin to cross the left knee behind the right. Walk your feet to opposite edges of the mat. Very slowly walk the hands back as you lower the hips between the heels. So less sensation, heels are closer to the body. More sensation, heels are further away. Sort of level the pelvis here, shift onto the front of your sitting bones. And you might crawl the hands forward for deeper stretch in the outer hips. And you also have the option to pair this with your shoulder opener here, reaching left arm high, turning the palm back behind you. Hand comes to the upper back. And then reach your right arm out to the side, turn the thumb to face down, and then wrap that arm around. Once again, it's not super important that the hands clasp. If they don't, just create that action, that directionality. Knit the low belly together, so hip points to low ribs, and then re-extend through the chest bone, the collarbone. Last big breath in. And release. So slowly transition to a seat here. And just one more series of closing stretches for the body. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, right hand out beside you, left arm up and over. Just a quick side body stretch. Had lots of core activation today. Inhale, come through center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, back through center. Gentle twist here. So. Left hand comes to the right knee. Rotate the spine. See if you can really get the twist into the upper back by dialing the collarbones apart. Back through center, reach. And exhale, twist. Right hand to the left knee. Mm 
And come up through center, reach both arms high. And a gentle fold, pillow your hands, rest your forehead for a few breaths. So we'll enjoy just a final resting posture here. If this is a bit too much, you can always come to your comfortable seat or you can even shift to lying down wherever you can be comfortably for a few closing breaths together. So these heating power vinyasa practices are a means to express that arousal energy that comes during ovulation, during the mid-cycle peak of hormones and energy. We have that surge of testosterone that connects us to our solar masculine side. So these practices where we are recruiting that strength in the third chakra, the belly, the place of the ego, that's supported by this time in the cycle. It's an opportunity to dance with the ego as we explore new postures to sort of keep it in check. So closing the way that we began, just to scan your body from head to toe. Notice anything that has changed, that has shifted. If you're folding forward, you can slowly start to come up wherever you are. Gently blink your eyes open. Bring a hand to heart, hand to belly. I want to thank you so much for joining me in this sequence today, for getting playful and exploring new movement patterns, new ways of being through your movement practice, and for being a part of this collective of women who move by the moon. <laughs>